Welcome to CRF's YouTube channel. As the leader in B2B credit education, we are pleased to offer this micro-learning session on the key elements of an effective credit policy. In this session, you'll learn the steps necessary to create an effective policy for your organization. Don't forget to like us if you enjoyed the session. Hello, and welcome to today's online micro-session on how to create a credit policy. My name is Rich Ferreira. I'm a certified credit executive. And I had a long career at Dun & Bradstreet where I managed teams that conducted financial and data analysis and credit consulting. And it's my pleasure today to walk through with you a nine step template on how to effectively create a credit policy. We have a more detailed session, which we will cover these nine steps in more detail. But today, session will focus on them at a high level, and we hope you find this helpful and will join one of the more detailed sessions at some point in the future. So let's get started. A successful commercial credit risk management starts with effective and well-documented policies called the credit policy. The credit policy itself is, of course, not all you need. You also need then to have that credit policy supported with sound processes and procedures around how you're going to make your credit decisions, manage your portfolio, and conduct collection management. However, all of that should be defined in your policy. And all of the policies, procedures, and processes together will result in improved cash flows and profits for your organization. So now let's get started with more about how to develop the policy part of this entire process. So an effective credit policy needs to include nine key elements or sections. And today we're gonna to step through these nine elements uh, one by one at a relatively high level. They'll include mission statement, goals, organization responsibility, credit evaluation, credit limits, terms of sale, account monitoring, credit holes, and collections. To create your credit policy, we recommend that you follow a sequential development process based on addressing these nine elements in three major groups. The three major groups are understand your business, determine how you will onboard new customers, and define how you will manage and report risk. And you should build your credit policy with a 360 degree communication life cycle as your guiding principle. So this is important as a guiding principle because it's important as you build your credit policy that you speak with senior leaders to understand your business's goals and objectives, and then gain alignment from these leaders on your credit policy so that it supports their goals and objectives, and also implement your credit policy in such a way that you can measure results and communicate these results with the same leaders that you aligned on and adjust your policy as necessary and repeat the entire process to some degree to review your credit policy on at least an annual basis. So now let's discuss in a little more detail the first major group, understand your business and mission statement goals and organization responsibilities. So your mission statement should map back to that first overall guiding principle of understanding your business and the 360 degree communication in which you need to reach out to the leaders in your organization, understand the overall company's objectives, and then make sure that your mission statement addresses your overall company's objectives in terms of how your credit department will operate at a very high level and do that in your mission statement. The next section is goals. These goals should then map back to your mission statement for your credit department. Here's where you want to define in some objective way what objectives or goals you're going to have to support the mission statement, 
So here's where you define goals for DSO, currency percents, delinquency percents in your AR, time to approve orders, etc. And then last but not least in understanding your business is who within your credit department will be responsible for what actions? Who's going to collect the data you need to make decisions, either through credit applications or third party data? And then who will make decisions, escalate decisions, review decisions, handle objections, etc. So after you set the uh, high level objectives and the understanding your business a grouping of uh, elements, now you want to get into a little more detail in determining how you will onboard new customers. So in step or element four, you need to define how you're going to do your credit evaluation. What kind of data are you going to require from a credit application or third party sources? When are you going to require financial statements? Are you going to approve some amounts of credit that may be uh, under a certain amount automatically? And then how are you going to make your decisions? Are you going to use uh, objective data like scores? Are you going to call trade or payment ex uh, payment or bank experiences? And then are you going to use some sort of a systematic approach with a scorecard or matrix to make your decisions? Step number five is credit limits the best practices at the time of making your credit evaluation that you also establish a credit limit and spell out how you're going to do that. At this point, you may want to think about different levels of credit limits that are based upon risk. So if it's step four, a customer is deemed as credit worthy, but a high risk, you want to give those customers less of a credit limit than those that in the credit evaluation step were deemed as low risks. In terms of sale, number six is similar. Are you going to offer blanket terms of sale? Or are you going to base those terms of sale to, to on some other aspect? For example, the product, the customization of a product may determine different terms of sale. And you also may want to think about different levels of risk for terms of sale, but you can should consult with your attorneys with regard to the proper implementation of terms based upon risk. And after you've determined how you're going to onboard new customers, you then have to define how you're going to manage existing customers and report risk. So in section or element seven, you should determine in your credit policy, how are you going to monitor existing accounts? Are you going to use just your internal data in terms of past due invoices, agings? You're going to use some external data to do that perhaps a service from a third party credit reporting company to flag customers that are going from high risk to low risk. And of course, low risk to higher risk. You should then define what activities will be generated from those account monitoring. Will you start collections more rapidly on certain customers? Also in some cases, perhaps, Look for opportunities to sell more to customers that are going from a high risk evaluation back in step four to a lower risk evaluation. So you can help grow your company's goals in terms of revenue generation. An output of the account monitoring step should be defined with, within your credit policy uh, with regard to credit holes. So when you're monitoring your accounts, at what point will a company go on credit hold? And make sure here that your systems can handle putting companies, customers on hold and also taking them off when they promise to pay or you receive a payment on a particular invoice. And then section nine is collections itself. Based upon your account monitoring, when are you going to start collection activities on specific uh, invoices that are past due? Or are you going to, for example, with high customers, start activities uh, of making phone calls to them before the invoices have been due because you want to set up proper expectations, determine if there's any customer service issues that should be rectified. And then of course, at what point will you uh, uh, play uh, customers for collections with a past due agency or write off debt? 
So all of those things should be included in your uh, credit policy for managing how you will monitor customers and report risk. And it should be a complete uh, cycle here. At the end of the process, you should have the capabilities then to report your, your, your standings of your accounts back to senior management so that they understand the full view of your portfolio. In summary, your credit policy should include these nine elements and your credit processes and procedures should then support the policy that you've developed with these nine sections. And remember our guiding principle and include performance measurements and the proper reporting and 360 degree communication feedback loop so that you can reevaluate your policy and make necessary modifications. Thanks for attending today's session and be sure to check for the more detailed session that we have on building an effective credit policy in which we'll go into these nine sections in much more detail.